There's another one. Everyone. Hello. Where are you going? Hello. This exhibition is kind of hard to tell, I think. You have to keep your eyes open and ears open and everything, I think. Um, I'm Ken Hannon. I'm the uh, Associate Executive Director here at the Dunning Fine Arts Center. And I'd certainly like to welcome everyone here. George Ann Bissett, our uh, Executive Director. Sends her regrets from Pennsylvania, where she had a, a, a family commitment that she uh, had to make it up to. And, and this is the first exhibit opening that she has missed in the six plus years that she's been. So we'll, we'll cover it on the slide. Uh, but I'm, I'm glad to be here, and I, and I hope you are too. This is a fabulous uh, set of exhibits. I, I get to, as, as also Director of Communications, I get to write about the exhibits all the time. I use all kinds of superlatives about the Arbus and our fabulous curator and, and all, all kinds of things. And yeah. this for this exhibit, it's been it's been really hard to stay away from you know the terms like out of this world and things like that. <laughs> and it's so all happened, <laughs> you know, because these this exhibit is as we look around here, uh, being Evans is fabulous, intergalactic is fabulous. What what the the uh, my favorite Martian in, in, in the hallways is, is so so incredible, and what Tom has done uh, with the last talk in the uh, in the children's hands on these things is just a treat. So please, uh, uh, after after the talk, take a, take advantage of looking at all of it, and I I won't try and um, give you a whole lot of information because really the person who knows everything about everything about it all is the person who put it together. And we'll be, uh, our curator is Captain Berger. Welcome everybody. Here we are again. I hope you had a great summer. And tonight, uh, as Ken said, we're welcoming artists in four different exhibits. We have some of the kids here tonight as well. They're already breaking in the new hands-on uh, installation. But we are very, very privileged to have uh, Mary Maximin and her husband, Stefan Hillebrand, and their children, Madeline and Emmett, in from Houston. Uh, to to share this opening night and give us some insight into their their intriguing works um, and at, at some point I'm going to, I'm going to uh, invite them to speak first uh, I will then introduce some of the artists who are present from Intergalactic which, which is the show in the Intel Gallery and uh, at the end we will have some question and answer which I'm sure so uh, to, to say just a few words about Stefan and Mary, I, um, a, a, as you may have heard me mention over the years, one of my, my great delights at the, in working at the Art Center is that George Ann sends me on these AAM conferences, always in a different major city. And so two years ago, it was in Houston, and uh, I went to an off-site tour of what is uh, called the Longdale Art Center where they have an artist in residency program. And that was really what I was interested in because I thought, maybe DMAC will have an artist in residency program someday. That would be cool. So when, when there, they had um, their, their current artist in residence, they had a, a, a stunning exhibit of all the, the artists in residence. I saw these photos for the first time, and Mary was at work that day, but Stefan was present, and, and that, was, that was two years ago, and so I was conspiring, how can we get them here, how, how can we, they're, they're very um, bold, but mysterious message into the programming that, that we have in mind. So it seems perfect for the message of being young, because of course their work uh, uh, revolves around family life and uh, relationship and yeah. I know all the parents can relate to that. Um, they, they are very credited with um, participating in international film festivals all over the world. Um, uh, Stuttgart, I think I saw Spain and um, Taiwan. Um, so I'm going to let them, they're the experts, and I'm, I'm going to introduce them right now. And, and let me get here, here straight from there. Welcome, welcome.
thank the Arts Center enough. Uh, this has been just a, a, a joy to be able to come here and to show the work. And we wanted to make sure also to say a special uh, thank you to Catherine. Um, it has been an absolute pleasure to work with her. Uh, I was just saying just a few minutes ago, usually when an artist has an exhibition, something goes wrong and you're just you're cringing about the hiccup that will happen. We have felt so special and so welcomed uh, for this exhibition and being here that it's just been an absolute uh, joy and we really just can't thank you enough. Uh, as, as she said, uh, this body of work, or the kind of two bodies of work that you see in the exhibition here, uh, the photographs are called Household and they were done about uh, two years ago. It was started in Houston during a residency program at the Longdale Art Center. Maybe give a plug. Uh, residencies for artists is a wonderful thing. It doesn't cost much, uh, but what you do is you really get this kind of wonderful community where you just walk in at any time and you see these people working. Uh, we primarily, up to that time, let me back up, Mary and I went in graduate school up in Detroit, Michigan, where the fall fell in that thing Is that the story? <laughs> there's, there's various versions of this. <laughs> So we really started to struggle, 
and we start to say, well, we should be making work, our work should be reflected or mirrored of our lives, shouldn't it? I mean, it should kind of not be something separate where you go to a museum or a gallery and you don't know, you look at it and say, I don't have any idea what this is about. Our artwork should really be. Well, to back up that, back up on that a little bit, we had always done work that was very autobiographical. When we were working separately, we always worked that was very autobiographical. And then when we started collaborating, it was also autobiographical and about like, our relationship and kind of looking at our world and our everyday activities. So it's kind of a natural outgrowth that the kids start to see in the work. <laughs> you know, weave their way in. So now I guess we're in a, a collaborative group, not of two, but of four, a partridge family, or a lot of tracks. So we've been working with Madeline and Emmett, four of us, right? We've been working together for maybe six years now, uh, including them in our projects, which comes down to this, this photographic series, Household. We were at Lawndale. We had a huge gallery space. Up until that time, we had been doing primarily video. And we said, well, we have to put something on the walls. So people, uh, when they come through for conferences, they can see something on the wall. So we started taking pictures. And the pictures are, I think we still haven't come up with a good name for it, but we call it sort of stage documentary, meaning that this is our lives. Um, uh, that's me taking recycling bags up the curb. Uh, that one's uh, back there. She's tied up all these things around her because one day I saw that she wanted to jump off her bed and she wanted cushioning uh, so she wouldn't fall. Uh, that's Emmett's, our son Emmett and his big wheel. That's really the way his room looks. <laughs> so. Um, You can see a Christmas garland. That's the day, Christmas, the day after Christmas. And I think I was so, oh, what the hell? Post, yeah, post Christmas exhausted. And I said, okay. Uh, wanted to capture it. So it's, it's all real, it's all our lives, but I think as artists, we maybe have a little bit of a, an aesthetic. Well, I feel like we're constantly praying. You know, every time we, you know, sit at the dinner table or the kids do something, it's always this frame that we're looking at. And so there's really not a whole lot of distinction between our art making life and our personal life. It's very blurred together, um, which ends up creating these kind of surreal um, type of environments uh, where we're making these uh, kind of constructive documents of our family life. Um, so. Very, um, it's very much part of who we are. Parts of every day, and then a little twist. Well, that's perfect. Yeah, perfect. So that this is our, our, our real life. We just frame it a little bit better than the average picture taker. Uh, people will joke, they'll come over to our house, and they'll see our camera and our lights sitting right there in the middle of the den. I was looking around. Uh, I think we have a, um, a video called Hole. Is that? No. Oh, no. Well, you can see in some of them, like uh, Accumulation, which was just uh, playing here. Uh, uh, that's our actual garage, and that's our stuff in our garage. And, and so when we build this pile of stuff, it was our real pile of stuff, and we just kind of got the idea. Uh, the one, the video in the back right now that's playing is called Disturbance. We had partnered up with a composer in New York, and he gave us a score, which we had to do video with. That's our neighborhood pool uh, that we go to, and we ask them if we could go and film there in the evening. Uh, and the guys enjoy jumping in their clothes. Yes, they're smiling. Well, it was funny too because we had another piece called Do Yourself Love Seat where we cut a couch. I took, a, I took a chainsaw and cut our family couch. <laughs> and, um, and so for this show, actually for the Lawndale show, we showed the couch cut up along with the video with it. So it was our TV from our house. 
and then the couch. So in our living room, there was no TV and there was no couch. And I remember Madeline uh, had a friend over for a sleepover. And the friend says, where's all of your stuff? Where's your TV? Where's your couch? <laughs> I was at my parents' work. <laughs> so it's kind of funny how, um, again, this kind of blurring of our personal and, and the work life comes together. The, 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 the piece, oh, I should just say, the, it's hard to just describe since it's not here, but one of the last pieces that we did is called Hole, and we tunneled through our house uh, with hammers. We punched holes into the wall from one bedroom to another, and then we used a skill saw to cut through the door to make this very strange kind of habit trail. And, and, it, and again,
And, uh, and I do want to mention some very exciting news, because when we were wrapping up the final plans for Marian and Stefan to come, uh, I got an email that they are interviewed for the, the New York Times. Yeah? And uh, the yeah, we are very excited. Um, the New York Times has a, um, a blog called The Lens Blog, and they feature different artists, and they do interviews with artists. And so um, you, you go onto the New York Times Lens Blog,
it's great when people think my hard work, and I'm not afraid to say this, is out of the world. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm also happy to be with these other wonderful artists. Thank you. <laughs> Ready to be thrown away, and 
kept looking at it. I said, well, I've got this show coming up. I can't throw those things away. I've got to use them somehow. And it occurred to me to do a kind of a diptych, you know, an on glass, where you would open the piece and it would, you would see different uh, pieces of the, of, the, of the head, you know, as you open it and close it. Well, it worked out that it wasn't, wasn't able to be hung on the wall. Uh, but you, you can get an idea of it. You, you see the uh, profile, and then you get to see inside. And uh, it's, it's full of symbolism. There's one symbol I use a lot, it's the eye. Uh, it can be seen as something from, from outer space or inner space as you look at the piece. And it's, it's all about knowing myself, you know, discovering myself and why I do things, uh, why, I, you know, as I go through life, I, I do these things and I, I crazy things, and I'm thinking, what in the world was that all about? You know, where did that come from? And I'm sure you experienced that too. And I have to think that it's it's part of myself trying to come through, you know, trying to assert itself on, on my imagination. And so that's that's basically what my work is about.
this actual making of my work, as I mentioned, we searched the planet for, for parts. Uh, all of my pieces start with a found object, at least one, sometimes many. And um, I love to find something in someone's trash or the recycling or the side of the road and see it for, for the value that no one's seen before. I love shape and I'll, I'll see the beauty in things that other people have thrown away. And if you uh, later want to ask me what any of the parts are, I'll probably tell you. I'm having a little speaker for that. Um, so the main, the main thing, I used to do serious work with uh, serious subject matter. I've been working for about 15 years. And I, I really want to make a point. Um, and then when someone didn't get my point, I'd be really upset. Um, and then when some actual serious things happened in my life, and I couldn't do art for, for a little while. And when I came back to it, I realized what I really want to do, there's plenty of serious in the world, and there are plenty of artists doing important, serious work. I really just wanted to bring more joy to the world. So I think that when you see my work and read the stories that are with it, as I mentioned, there's a mythology behind Cybercraft Robots. Every one of my pieces has a story as well, and they are on the pedestals <laughs> next to the pieces in the room. Um, and I hope that they'll make you happy as well. And um, the one piece I want to say, the one that's called Co Copperhead, uh, it's great. Right and when I finished it, I didn't have a story for it, which is unusual. Usually the story comes as I'm creating the piece and it's telling me what it wants to be. I get the story from that. This one I finished and I had no story. And then my mother was bitten by an actual copperhead snake. And she survived it, she's fine. By the way, just so that you know, uh, anti-venom is almost as deadly as venom. So it's not like my television. But um, the piece ended up being a sci-fi version of salute to her, what she went through, which is of course I want because she doesn't like science fiction and didn't understand the story. But I, I
their intelligence is relatively low because they're only four or five years old. And uh, their language changes. They're severely inbred. And they just keep on going. 600 years in the future, they built this temple. And um, I came across it in my uh, travel through time. And they were probably one of my favorite civilizations that I ran across. Um, they live in a place called Superlove. In fact, the temple comes from a uh, the temple precinct in Superlove, which was built on top of a, uh, a hill. And that hill they, uh, they found when they were in this perpetual search for this thing that they called the Flying Severed Silver Monkey. Now, that's what they called the flash that they saw in the sky. A silver flash, mind you. And um, they just kept on searching and searching for this place that was going to be theirs. They were on this never-ending search for this city that they referred to as the city of black clouds and rain, which is where they thought it came from. Um, they never found it, you know, it evaporated because they looked. But one day they did come across something that rang a bell with them. For their lore and tales that people from past generations had told them that they had, you know, come from the city and that when the world ended, there was this flash, this silver flash, that was referred to as the seven silver monkey, right? And so they, they were searching and searching and searching, and one day I saw this glowing orb in the ground. It was a little crack in the ground, maybe tectonic plates moving or something like that. But there, glowing on the ground was symbol of what they had been searching for. Their, their primary god, Severed Silver Monkey. Just a little glowing egg-shaped thing that they decided that they were gonna build their civilization here. And um, that very spot is where they would build their temple to their flying Severed Silver Monkey, so they tell me. Anyway, um, so, in my dealings throughout time, my collecting, I uh, decided that that's going to be what I would bring to this show. I've got a large collection of things from the future and the past, and that was my favorite. So,
the Aztec and Mayan, you know, through time and whatnot. Yes. <laughs> yes, it's your answer. <laughs> okay, let me can ask anybody, any of the artists a question, any one of them. I would like to ask our lovely robot lady, if you remember your name. But you were saying that you, in your work, you find artifacts in space. How do you get them down here? <laughs> I mean, is this for real?
Thank you again, Mary and Stefan and Madeline and Emmett coming from Houston to Mother Cup. Thanks for that family. Happy to help you with that.